Hello, in this video I'm going to work through selected properties of circles with GeoGebra. And so we've got several postulates and theorems in geometry which can be confirmed and at least represented using the technology and that helps to understand and sort of intuit and accept these uh, as being true. But it helps at least to work with the theorems a little bit more. So the first one, central angle, is that we have some angle made by uh, the joining of two radii here. Obviously the radii are equal, that's the definition of a radius. And then we have this central angle is equal to the arc length, MAB, the measure of AB. That one's fairly intuitive because as we measure, we've got our, uh, our sector here. As we measure this piece of the pi, the angle here created by these two radii meeting at the center of the circle, we can see that this, as we measure this, the way we measure angles is drawing that little arc, and we could then project that out to the circumference, and that would be the same uh, as we have here. It's just a larger scale. And so our measure there is 53.21. And in order to confirm using GeoGebra that 53.21 is the same as this arc, because it is so intuitive, I have to take an indirect path. So I've drawn a sector here using draw circle sector on GeoGebra and then taking the area of that sector. Now, if we take this piece of the pie and then look at it in terms of how large, what percent or how large it is in comparison to the whole area of the circle, uh, then we can compare that to the ratio of this arc length, this, this central angle measure, uh, in comparison to the 360 degrees in the entire circle. And so, what I do here is take 53.21, which is our angle measure, and then divide that by 360, so we have a ratio of 53.21 uh, to the entire number of degrees in the circle. And then we, we think that's going to be equal to uh, the same ratio of 4.18 to the entire uh, area of the circle, which is 9 pi. And so 53.21 divided by 360 times 9 pi indeed does equal 4.18. It's the same as the uh, same as the area here. So if we take sorry this the proportion of this angle here in comparison to the larger 360 degrees, multiply that by the entire area of the circle, then we get that piece of the pie there. Uh, so it's so intuitive that we really don't need to prove it so much. Here we have two chords, and we have an inscribed angle. And then that angle is half of the opposite uh, arc there. And then generally, these two chords are not equal. They could be, but generally, they're not. Same circle, uh, starting with x squared plus y squared equals 9. So we have a radius of 3. We've got two chords. We've got points on the circumference here. And then we measure this. We're going to measure this angle at 34.2 degrees. And then create a sector. Uh, to measure this arc length here, which is going to be equal to that angle measure in the center. Again, very intuitive that this angle measure is the same as the arc length uh, in terms of degrees. And so that angle measure beta is 68.4 rounding error, or rounding uh, caused the 0 0.01 difference here. But indeed, uh, this angle measure is twice this uh, opposite the arc. All right, on to the next one. An angle formed by intersecting chords. So we've got two chords going in opposite directions. Previously, we had two chords meeting at one point on the circumference. Uh, and then we were looking at a relationship with the angle made by that. This one, we've got two chords intersecting. And we have a relationship between both the chord segment lengths and also the angle here, which has a relationship with the arc lengths opposite and uh, opposite the, the vertical angle there. So by chord lengths, we're going to see that this segment multiplied by this segment is equal to this segment times that segment. And indeed, we get CG, which is 3.26, times CD, which is 1.68. So this part times this part is equal to this part times that part, uh, 5.47. And then same thing, EG, which is 1.15 times G, 
F, which is 4.75, and D does equal 5.47. So that checks out. Next, we want to look at this measure, which is 82.14. That's going to be half the sum of these two here, going back to the theorem. So the measure of three is half the sum of the arc lengths, which are opposite, and then opposite the uh, vertical angle here. So we'll have to measure, we'll have to make some sectors first of all, uh, and then measure those sectors, add them together, and we get indeed that uh, this angle here, 82.14 is half 127.28 plus uh, 36.99. And so one point beta and these two angles added together divided by two equals this one here, which is equal to that original angle made by the two intersecting cores. So that one checks out, and they all will. Uh, but as we work with GeoGebra, and especially if students and people otherwise get into uh, the program and work with this, these types of theorems, it, it tends to become a little bit more concrete to make a little more sense as we work through and explore these concepts in the Technology. So we have an angle formed by two intersecting secants. Now remember, secant is like a core, but it also extends outside the circle. So it's cutting through the circle circumference and then landing on a spot on the circumference opposite. So we've got a core here, and then we've got this whole thing as a secant. And again, a relationship between the segments, right? So PL, this entire secant length times LM times the measure of the segment outside of the circle is equal to QL, the entire secant length, times the measure of the segment outside the circle. So we have a segment relationship multiplying them. And then we've got an angle relationship for, and this follows the same basic pattern as what we've seen with other, part, with other uh, intersecting chords and angle made by two chords. Uh, one half PQ minus this time, and then, so if the angle is outside, then we're going to take the larger arc, subtract from that the smaller arc, divide that by two, and we'll get that measure of the angle outside. And so here we've got that same situation with two secants, and let's first look at the core lengths. So the entire secant, I'm sorry, the entire segment of the secant is, uh, times the segment outside is 5.48 times 2.25. And then that's going to be equal to 4.87 times 2.24. Again, the entire secant times the segment outside. And indeed, that all checks out 17.42. Uh, next, we need to create the sectors using GeoGebra here to measure these angles. And then remember, those angles are the same as the arc lines here in degrees. right? So what we get is this angle over here is 33.68, and then that's supposed to be equal to one half the larger arc minus the smaller arc. What we get is 93.46 minus 26.09 divided by two. So this one minus this one divided by two, as we see here, is equal to 33.68, which is the same as that uh, angle measure outside the circle here. That checks out, and of course they all do. That's why they're in math books as theorems and postulates and things. Next, angle formed by two intersecting tangents. So a tangent, remember, lands on a spot on the circle edge, and it will only touch that one spot. It could, this line could continue going on forever, and it will only touch the circle on one spot of the circumference. And so, of course, tangent lines are equal. Any two tangents drawn from one point are equal. Uh, and then we have, we have again, a angle measure relationship here where we've got same thing as we had before with the secants, the larger arc minus the smaller arc divided by two is equal to that angle outside. So we have our uh, two tangents here, we've got an angle here, and then what we want to do is first measure that angle 54.85. Uh, we're going to draw some sectors, we've got the larger sector here, the smaller sector here, and then remember these angles are the same as the arc lengths, right, in degrees, and so we'll take the larger arc minus the smaller arc divided by two, and indeed we get the same measure in, in degrees as this angle out here. Uh, next, this is from a different theorem or from a different postulate, uh, whatever you want to call it, fact. 
that anytime we have a anytime we have a tangent line, then the radius which meets that tangent line at that point where the tangent hits the circle circumference forms a 90 degree angle or a right angle. And then of course DC equals EC. These two tangent lengths are equal from a single point where they intersect outside the circle. Right. That brings us back to our last one angle formed by radius drawn on tangent is 90 degrees. And so those basic facts about circles uh, are important for solving geometry problems. And then anytime you're working with gears or uh, I mean a lot of things in the world are circular and have these types of relationships from uh, astrophysics to uh, mechanical engineering and various other uh, disciplines. And so these things are simply facts. And it's important that we work with them and understand them through technology like GeoGebra helps us to provide more uh, robust proof or evidence such that they be intuitive and then we can even memorize them by working with them on GeoGebra and such graphing applications, okay? Thank you.